Have you ever been live streaming, something amazing has happened, and you wish that there was a way that you could clip out that moment for posting on social media, adding to a highlights edit, or even feeding it back into your live stream as an action replay? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you a free and easy way to do it using an ATEM Mini or any capture device and OBS. Let's get started. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is connect your ATEM Mini up to your Mac or PC. This will work with both via the USB-C output on the ATM Mini. So do that. You're also going to need to download OBS if you haven't already. I've got a fresh version of OBS installed here. And before we bring in the ATEM, I'm going to show you a couple of the settings that you need to keep an eye on and change as well. So if we go into the settings tab on the bottom here, and then firstly, we're going to go to video. And you want to make sure both the base canvas resolution and the output scaled resolution are set to 1080p, so 1920 by 1080. And also for the FPS, the frames per second value, you want that set to the same as what you have your ATEM set to. So I have my ATEM set to 50 frames per second, and I echo that here in OBS. Once you've done that, you can hit apply in the bottom left. And then we're going to go over to output. Now, the first thing you want to do is change the output mode to advanced because that will open up some more options that we actually need for the, uh, the recording. We can ignore the streaming tab here. We're not doing any of the streaming inside of OBS. That will all be done on the ATEM for the live stream. But we are import or what is important is the recording. So we're firstly going to choose a file of where we want our clips to be saved. I'm actually going to save them on my Blackmagic Cloud Store. Um, so I've got a file on there or a folder on there that I'm going to choose called OBS recordings. There it is. And then in terms of the recording format, this is quite important. You might be tempted to record in a format like MP4, for example, but I would recommend going with .mkv. The reason for that is if you were to have an error in the file, when you record in .mkv, if you're struck down by an error, many things can cause them. It means with that file format, Everything that you've done up until the error hit is actually recoverable. If you choose something like, for example, MP4, because of the way that that format works, if an error hits midway through recording, you lose everything. So go with MKV. I'll show you in a second how you can actually turn on something called Remux Recordings, which will then basically reformat the recording as soon as you hit the save button anyway to an MP4 file. So you get the best of both worlds. For the video encoder, just for the purpose of this video to keep it simple, I'm going to choose X264. If you, just because everyone's setups are different, if you've got a more powerful setup, uh, you can choose whatever is best in this list for you. If you don't really know what you're doing here, just go with X264. That will work in 99% of instances. And then the rest, we can pretty much keep the same. I'm, I am just going to go down to the encoder settings. Now, I mentioned before where I'm mainly going to use this is posting clips to social. So the bitrate doesn't need to be huge. I'm just going to set a kind of standard bitrate here of around 6,000 kilobits per second. And then I'm going to hit apply. I don't need to change any more settings in here. Now, there's two more things that we need to do. The first is actually enable this here called replay buffer. So if we go into the replay buffer and click enable, there's then this important setting where it says minimum or maximum replay time. This is the length of the clip that you want. So you need to decide how long do I actually want this clip to be that's going to be clipped out. It's basically going to take the last, in this case, 20 seconds after the, the exact second that you hit that create replay button. It will take the last 20 seconds. So I like to make mine a little bit longer. I choose 60 seconds knowing that if I need to, I can quickly throw this into an editor and top and tail it, make it shorter. But I'd rather capture everything than select this as maybe like 10 or 20 seconds and miss like a key moment. And then the final thing I'm going to show you how to do is if you go to advanced and then go down to recording here, this is where you can enable that option to automatically remux the recording to MP4. So it will record in .mkv and then as soon as you hit the save recording button, it will then create additionally an MP4 file of the exact same recording. So you get the best of both worlds. Once you've done all that, hit apply and hit OK. And we've done all of the OBS settings now. What we can do is actually add in our A10 mini now, which is what the feed that we're going to use for the clips. So click plus at the bottom and then we'll click, we'll add the video in first. So video capture device, we'll call A10 mini. And we'll find our Blackmagic device here, which is the A10 mini plugged in. If this doesn't show up, it probably means that your USB um, cable isn't working or it isn't fully plugged in. So check that. I'm actually going to 
manually set this up. So we'll go 1080p with a value of 50 frames per second. And we shouldn't need to change anything else down here. That's the video brought in. We can see me here. To bring in the audio, it's a similar story. We click on the plus button at the bottom and do audio input capture. I'll call this ATEM audio. And then we choose the Blackmagic device here as the audio input. And we see our levels there. So we've got audio and video coming into OBS. We're not going to be streaming out from OBS. We're going to use the ATEM for the actual stream, but we can use this for the recording. And the eagle eyes amongst you would have noticed we have a new button appear on the right hand side of OBS called Start Replay Buffer. Now, at the beginning of your live stream, you're just going to want to hit this. And what this does is it basically enables or is recording in the background a loop of that time you set in the replay buffer. So I set mine to 60 seconds and it's basically recording continuously the 60 seconds worth. So when we then hit this button that's appeared next to it, which says save replay buffer, it's going to take that 60 second recording and save it. So imagine we're live on a soccer match and the attacker is streaming down the middle of the field and scores a goal. The crowd goes wild. You want to clip that and put it on Twitter. You now just click this button here and we can see it says recording auto remarks and is being saved to that location. We saw the little remarks recording thing appear at the top. Now what we need to do is go and find that folder. So if we go to the Blackmagic Cloud Store, we go to my folder down here that says OBS recordings. You can now see we've got two files. We've got the original recording, which is in an MKV format, and we've got the remuxed recording, which is the exact same file, but as an MP4 format. And I can open that up here in QuickTime, play it, and we'll skip through to the end here, which is where I was talking about the player going down the middle of the field, scores a goal, crowd goes wild, and you can see we've got our clip there. If we needed to trim it a little bit, you could throw it into an editor like a uh, DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, or if you're a Mac user like me, you can keep it really simple and just do it inside QuickTime and just trim off the beginning, for example, and then hit trim. And then we've got our smaller clip there. Save that out, upload it to Twitter. So it's really simple to create clips and you can do as many of these as you want. Even as we were editing this, OBS in the background is still recording. So if I want, if something else happens, another goal goes in, we just click that button again and then go back to the folder. And you can see we've got our new re replay here where I was talking right at the end. If something else happens, you just click that button again. So that's how you can clip out key moments from your live stream. But what happens if you want to easily clip parts out and then instantly send them and give access to them to an editor who's on the other side of the world? Well, that's where today's sponsor LucidLink comes in. LucidLink is the new way for creative teams to work together on projects in real time without having to download and sync media locally. It's fast, simple, secure, and acts just like a regular hard drive connected to your computer locally, but with all the benefits of a cloud storage solution. Take this footage I've just shot in my studio as an example that I want my remote editor to get working on. Traditionally, I'd have to either send them the SSD or wait hours for all 200 gigabytes to upload to something like Google Drive, and they'd have to wait for it all to download at their end before starting on the edit. With LucidLink, they can get started straight away and could even have instant access to the footage as I'm uploading it. There's no wait to download the full file because LucidLink streams only the bits of the file they need as and when it's needed. Let me say that again. You don't have to download your media first just to start working. Instead, play your media in real time directly from the cloud. LucidLink revolutionizes the way you store and access your files, making collaboration simple and allowing you to work seamlessly together from any location in the world as if you were in the same room. No more wasting time with complicated VPN setups or slow file transfers. And because it appears just like a physical hard drive plugged into your computer, it seamlessly works with all your existing apps and tools. With your files being in the cloud, you don't have to worry about running out of storage either. LucidLink is fully scalable and can handle as much data and as many users as you need. Another benefit is that LucidLink provides you with a single source of truth for all of your files. So there's no more confusion about whether you're working with the latest version or if some of your team are working with out of date files. And it's secure. It uses military grade encryption for all your data to ensure that the only people that have access to your files are the ones that you grant access to. So say hello to seamless collaboration, real time performance, scalable storage, global access, enhanced security 
and a single source of truth for all of your files. Try Lucid Link today by clicking the link in the description to get started with your free trial and let me know in the comments below how you find it. So now that you know what Lucid Link is, let me show you how you can use it to share the clips that you create in OBS with members from your team, no matter where they're located in the world instantly. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the settings button here and we're gonna go into our output settings. And that's the main thing we're gonna change is where OBS is gonna save the file. So if we go into the recording tab here and we click on the recording path, we wanna select that to be a folder within our Lucid Link file space. So mine is, uh, my Lucid Link file space is called video. And then I've created a folder called OBS clipping in here. And I just select that. So now any of the recordings I make in OBS, including those clippings, are gonna go into a folder on my Lucid Link. So I'm just gonna hit apply on there. Now, one quick tip here, if you are gonna wanna use Lucid Link with OBS yourself, when you first create your Lucid Link file space on the web, go to the advanced settings and it's gonna ask you to select a block size for that file space. The default is 256 kilobytes, up that to one megabyte. That's what I found works best with this workflow. So now that all the settings are done, I'm just gonna start my replay buffer here and keep talking for 10 or so seconds so we get some footage before clicking that save replay button. So that should be enough. We've got a good few seconds there. So I'll hit that save replay button now. You can see straight away, it remuxes the recording. If we open our Lucid Link folder here, we've got both recordings in there. And actually if we open Lucid Link, we can see it's uploading the file. But even as it's uploading, if we go to my editor's PC now, we can actually see, and imagine this is anywhere in the world, we can actually see those recordings are already showing in the Lucid Link folder on this computer. And I can just open this one up here in QuickTime and I've got instant access to that file. I can hit play. And there we go. So that means no matter where in the world your team are, they can have instant access to these replay files. They could be taking them, putting them into an editor and creating a highlights package for you to then use at the end of a show or just simply trimming them in the editor and then posting them up to social media sites to gain more traction for your live streams. So there's loads of ways that this could be used and I hope you can see how powerful this type of tool is. Now I wanna share a few top tips with this because at the moment to save a replay, you've seen me having to use my mouse to click this button here. I'll show you how to set a hotkey and I'll even show you how to then map that uh, onto something like an Elgato Stream Deck. So if you go to settings here at the bottom right corner of OBS and we go to the hotkeys menu, just search for replay. And you can set a hotkey if you want to start the replay buffer. You only need to do that once at the beginning of your live stream. And then once your live stream is finished, you can also stop the replay buffer. The real key one that you want to set a hotkey for is this save replay buffer. That is the hotkey that you're going to press every time that you want to save the last 60 seconds or 20 seconds, whatever you've set. So for me, I just use uh, command shift F. So if you click here, command shift S, sorry, hit apply, click OK. And then whenever I click on my keyboard, keyboard, command shift S, you'll see it then creates a clip for me. Now to map that to a stream deck, it's really easy. You can do that if you use the Elgato plugin, you can do that using a global hotkey, or if you use the companion, BitFocus companion app, you can also use the OBS plugin on there to also trigger starting and stopping the replay buffer and saving a replay. To set it up, we just go to tools up at the top here in OBS and click on WebSocket server because the WebSocket is what's gonna allow us to control OBS via companion. So make sure that that is enabled. Also, I'd recommend enabling authentication just to add another layer of security. You don't want anyone else to be able to control your OBS instance. Once you've got both of those enabled, click on show connection info, because that is the connection we're gonna to use to put into companion if we open up here to control our OBS. So ignore all my existing companion instances. We're actually just gonna add a new OBS instance here. So we can type in OBS on the side, click add, and then it adds it down at the bottom here. And we can start populating it with that information. So the IP address is 192.168.1.192. The server port was what we had there in OBS 4449. So we'll just copy that in. If you're already using that, you can just change that in OBS and then reflect it here in companion. And that server password, we will copy over into companion as well. Then I'm just gonna give it a label as Mac Studio OBS and then hit save. And we can see it's got a green tick showing us it's connected. And now OBS is being controlled or can be controlled by companion. So if we go over to our 
buttons page here and just we're going to create three buttons one to start the replay buffer one to stop it and one to save our clips so click on the create button there and we'll say this is start replay buffer and under the actions just type in replay that's going to give us all the actions we need and we've got our start replay buffer there and then i'm just going to copy that and do the same but for stop and change that or delete that one and add in replay again stop replay buffer and then we'll just add another button underneath for save 60 seconds because that's how long my clips are 60 second clip and that if we type in replay again is going to be save replay buffer. So now that the buttons are created, we can actually control OBS with our stream deck. So I'm gonna hit this button to start the replay buffer here. We can save a clip by clicking this button. And you can see it says Remux recording and saves the clip as we're used to. And then I can stop the replay buffer with this button. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It really does help. Just take two seconds to do that. And if you like this tip and want to see more tips and more tools that you can use for your broadcasts or podcast recordings, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'll be back with more very soon. Also, if you've got any questions about this workflow or any of my videos in general, leave them down in the comments below. I read through all of them and will reply to as many of them as possible. And if you need specific help with your setup, you can always contact me on the email address below and we can set up a one-to-one -one session to help answer any of your questions or get your setup or workflow perfected. And once you've done all that, guys, I will see you on the next video.